This video is part two of our must have custom function series. And this one has several on text cleanup. Let's jump right into our custom functions and take a look at some simple ones, but very helpful nonetheless. And first off, it might be interesting to note that you could name these whatever you want. And this is called alphanumeric. But uh, this particular custom function by our own Robin Story is uh, prefaced by CF with an underscore. And that is helpful when you are using it like in the data viewer or some other specific place. You do have this uh, type here where you can look at custom functions over here but if you are simply typing it out alphanumeric having this cf in front of it does kind of make it distinct so you can see oh this is one that i made or this is uh, definitely a custom function because if you use one enough you might just forget that it's not technically a file maker function it's actually a custom function so it's nice uh, to have that naming convention it's also nice that you can just type the elf and it comes up automatically this alphanumeric and all we have to do is type in some text so we'll just type in abc and it gives us ABC. If we have one, two, three, it has that as well. But if we put any punctuation in there, then this one does not allow it. If we just go across the top of the keyboard here and put in everything going across, then it's still only getting us alphanumeric. So this can be very helpful at just stripping out anything that's not a letter or number. So let's look and see how this is accomplished in this particular one. It's fairly straightforward. Just one line, we have the filter function and we just have it preset to allow all of this. So yes, you could type this out anytime you wanted to use this function in a script, but this is obviously 26 and another 26 that's 52 and 10 so that's 62 characters that you would have typed uh, each time and if you make a mistake then you're missing it out so this is just a good way to solidify and ensure this is what i want when i strip this now you may want to make some variations because in this particular one notice that all of this with the spaces just leaves me but if you have two words in there it's going to lose the space because it wasn't included in here so if you wanted a space then you could put that in there but now you're going to have a bunch of the spaces in front or behind so you really want to make sure that you know what it is you're trying to accomplish. You could have one um, leading alpha numeric or uh, post alpha numeric. You know in your solution how you want it to end up and uh, you could run that through in a similar fashion. So very simple, but very time saving when the time comes to use that. The next one is kind of similar, and that is full trim. So let's look at this. This is another one from Robin Story. This is going to eliminate all white space at the beginning and end of text, including returns. Now we have a trim function in FileMaker already. So if we just go take a look at that in case you haven't used that, then we'll give you a quick refresher. We have trim and this returns text stripped of all leading and trailing spaces. So not return characters, but spaces. And they give some examples there and the trim all gives you a little more <laughs> options as far as the kind of spaces and whether it's true or false but we're still talking about spaces here 
And in this instance, we want to get rid of spaces and return characters. So in this particular example, we have the just me return because it got rid of all of those. So let's look at the actual function here. We have the text as the parameter that comes in and it's going to trim that. So in this particular example here, it would get rid of all of this and all of this, but it does, it would stop at the return character on each side. So then it gives you the text length of the remaining part. So that would be this part right here. So then it goes to the if statement. If the left of text one is this, which in our case it is, then we're going to make a recursive function. We're going to call this function again, only we're going to use everything to the right, like this, of what's left here, because we're subtracting one. So we have all of this. And when it comes through again and we trim that text, it's going to be left with this part right here. So when it gets the length and it comes to here, if left is this, it is not, then it's going to go to this if statement. If right of the text is this and it is, then it's going to call itself again. So it's going to send this minus that right character. So when it comes through, it's going to trim off all of those spaces. So we're left with this part right here and gives us the length. If left is this, it's not. If right is this, and it is. So it's gonna call it again and give just this, go through, trim off that space because of this line, we're left with this. So if the left is this, it's not. If the right is this, it's not. So it's going to leave text. So let's just try this in our data viewer and see what we can notice. And I love that when you type in trim, you've got all of the options. And let's just put that and there it is. And you can see there's no return characters here on the end. Very handy custom function. This is why it is one of our favorites. So next let's look at one that is a little different, it has to do with values and so we'll stretch this here we have remove empty values so we'll take a look at this one and this we have the author to give credit where credit is due this has been around for a while so you may know about this one and basically we want to get rid of any empty values so they're giving the example here of a plus a bunch of return characters B and C, that gives us just a clean value list. So the other potential uses here are other ways that you might get uh, value lists. So it's any value list, or if you're hard coding it, you could do that as well. And when you run through this one, it's substituting any double return characters, pill crows, uh, with a single, and then it's going to go through and look to see if there's one on the left, then it's going to get rid of that and just do the, uh, the left part, just as we saw in the previous custom function and check on the right side and, and do the left. So it's going through once, it's checking the right and the left after it substitutes. And then it does pattern count looking for, are there any other doubles? Because in this instance, we have uh, three in a row here. And so if there are a whole bunch of them, it may, actually need to go through a few times to substitute down to having only one in each space here. So it removes those empty values again, going through until there's no more doubles. Then it checks the left and the right on the outside, and then it checks the left only, and then it checks the right only. And if it passes all those, it returns just text. So let's test this one out in our return empty values. We'll go to our data viewer and just do, let's type in values just so you can see there's quite a few of them here. 
So you have this remove value, but when we type in values, we get the remove empty value. So if we had that CF underscore, it might be easier to find this. Of course, it's all still over here if you wanted to jump to it that way, but I love typing and getting that type ahead feature. So if we plug in what we were given, we have that. If we just add a whole bunch of these, we're automatically evaluating. It's not making a change unless maybe we add a letter. Now we just have all of these and notice there's none at the end. It doesn't have a return character at the end or at the beginning. So very good at cleaning up a value list, very helpful. And the last one we want to look at is removing a specific value. Instead of just removing the empty values as we did before to clean up the list, it could be that we want to remove a specific value, meaning it's been chosen or we're, we're doing a random list and we wanna get rid of the list uh, one by one so that when you go through the list again, you don't choose the same one a second time. So this is by Caleb Ruth here giving credit and it's simply giving a value and the value list and it's going to return everything but that it doesn't have to be in the front as we'll see. So it gives a value count and it wants to know is there actual values in this parameter and then we get the first value of this value list and it goes through if there are values then it's going to check the first value with the value that we sent in and if it is an exact match that's all we're comparing here is the parameter and the first value then uh, if it is not an exact then it's going to do the existing value and keep that one and it's going to then call remove value again but it's only going to take the right values all of these so it's just going through and comparing each one one by one starting with the first one and then as soon as it gets to the one that it is an exact match then uh, it doesn't continue on with its process so let's just try this we'll copy all of these here and we'll test this out this is remove value we'll go into our data viewer we'll type in remove there's remove value those are the ones we want and it returns b and c so if we put in a d it still works if we put in our c it gives us a and b put in b there's a and c and if we put nothing it still gives us all so very helpful when needed fun easy simple sometimes the most beneficial custom functions are not necessarily the most complex only a few lines here and it is recursive you may be able to do some of this with the while function now that that is out if you're using filemaker pro 18 but this has been around and works very well. So I hope that is helpful. Hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for another one coming up in the series on custom function must haves. Be sure to watch our previous one. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you are enjoying this content and we will see you in the next video.